What's up, guys? Welcome to another episode of the Jiu-Jitsu Junction podcast. My name is Andre, and I'm here with my buddy Chase. And today we will be discussing goal setting as a Jiu-Jitsu white belt. Setting the right goals as a Jiu-Jitsu white belt is one of the most important things that you can do. And I feel like there's a big problem with Jiu-Jitsu white belts setting the wrong goals, unrealistic goals, or just, you know, the wrong goals. You mean I'm not going to tap somebody out every class? Well, I mean, you can you can warm up your tapping fingers and tap people mm-hmm. as you're tapping out in oh, class, yeah, right? That, so, yeah. so setting these unrealistic performance goals against other students is a pretty big problem. And it's really easy to have this happen, right? Yeah, for sure. So it's, it's really about, it seems like making the shift from having goals around performance to goals around development and learning is so important, but nobody talks about how to do it. Yeah. And and, I mean, it's definitely, I understand, you know, you're, we're new, you know, new to a a combat art and you're with another, like you want to do well, you want to, you want to win, you know, it's, if you're getting into a hobby, you want to be good at your hobby. So, you know, you, you're the first place people look and, you know, I, I coach kids. The first place people look every time is wins and losses, and it's like it's not. Maybe, maybe let's work on getting better at uh, at controlling our emotions during the match. You know, and and keeping our position the whole time. So, yeah, it's it's a, it's a hard thing at the beginning. You want to do good, so we got to kind of defer that and and set goals on the right things. Yeah, you you mentioned talking about like people controlling their emotions, right? And, and that's that's something that we always talk to children about, right? Yep. Adults need it too. They need it a lot. Sometimes they need it more because they never put in the work to get their emotional reactions under control to begin with. Yeah, and there's years of, of things that, have, that may have happened, years of uncomfortable things. You know, I run into people all the time, never grappled. So, you know, they've been maybe a car wreck and it brings back a memory you know, so those are things that adults, kids usually don't have to deal with those things. They don't have traumatic, possible traumatic experiences and things that may come back. You know, I don't, I don't like this or I get, I lose my breath when I'm in a tight spot. You know, those things aren't usually things kids say. Those are more adult problems and stuff, you know. So. Yeah, for sure. So, like, there's a lot of basic things that can be viewed as progression. Emotional control is one of them. Making the shift into a learning mindset is one of them. Letting go of performance goals is one of them. Um, you're not going to suddenly become a star athlete, especially if you started out like I did where you were just an office worker, right? You're an office worker in your late 20s, early 30s. That's a pretty common demographic to get into jujitsu. And there's nothing about a desk job that prepares you for being good at something like jujitsu. Nope, nope, nope. But I tell you what, there... There's some scary desk jockeys. Man, I tell you, <laughs> two and a half, three years, just stick with it. Okay, I promise. <laughs> yeah. uh, two and a half, three years, it make it, especially when, uh, I'm when obviously a, a guy in our gym sticks out to me more than anything. And he, I remember we had a talk, maybe it was a year and a half ago. And uh, it was after a roll and we got done. And he said, oh man, it almost get you. <laughs> I was like, no, nah, I said, well, I mean, it was close. I was like, but, you know, you were kind of too tight. You kind of attacked it too hard. Like, you were really trying to win it. He was like, well, I was. I was trying to get it. And I was like, oh. <laughs> oh, okay. So we rolled the next round, and then we got done rolling. <laughs> and I was like, that's the difference in trying to win stuff and trying to not. I, uh, he probably didn't win a position, you know. And I yeah. just showed him the difference, and he was just like, whoa. And he was like, what do you mean? And I explained, man, I, I'm not trying. I'm trying to, to feel the things you're doing. You know, I'm trying to work the moves we're working on in class or the works, you know, what I'm doing. Like, I, I've got different goals than trying to win. the, And, and it just kind of, like, mind, you know, blew his mind. And he was like, oh. And we talked about that day playing with things, you know, and that was what kind of shifted his focus from, man, he was trying to win. And that was probably a year and a half, maybe, yeah, probably two years of him training where he was trying to win. You know, that was just nobody had sat down and said, hey, man, try to try to play with something, try to have some fun. Like, set a different, you know, like winning, man, there's no referees in here. You know, so it was a cool uh, kind of eye opener for him, and then you know he catches guys that I get to travel across the world to to fight with. Yeah, that's super. It's really cool. It's uh, a super interesting and inspiring kind of yeah. story. 
right? Uh, so ma- like a lot of the times people don't make the shift from trying to roll to win to trying to roll to learn until two or three years in, right? Yep. You can de- you can definitely make that shift sooner. Yeah, shorten like the curve. Be, be very deliberate and you'll be able to shorten the curve, right? So there's yeah, it the- just starts with knowing knowing that man winning you're in a jiu-jitsu room probably your your white belt you just started out and we've talked about it before like you know a little bit of that swallow that ego like everybody has done this if you're new everybody's done this longer than you probably in the room you know so understand that things are probably being allowed and having that understanding is going to cut that curve i've watched white belts come in the room that oh man i'm, I'm just i just want to learn man this stuff's cool you know yeah, they progress faster really fast. especially in the technical aspects right yeah. And you usually see this, I don't know if this is in your experience, but it's the the smaller people. They're just, they they let go of the need to win a little bit sooner. And sometimes the hippies. The hippies, yeah, yes. Sometimes the, the hippies. God, there, there are some deadly hippies out there. Man, we've, uh, <laughs> I'll say, you definitely know, he plays bass guitar, uh, Jason. Man, just a, really? just a real laid back guy. He plays bass guitar. He posts pictures of his cat on his Instagram. But man, he... He just never really cared about winning. Like he was like, "Oh man, if they want to smash me, man, they can." He was like, "This is cool to me." He's like, "I'm using my feet." And then he would like find ways to get to people's back using just his guard because Jeff would tell people to use just your feet. You know, that's all he was trying to do, man. And and then people were like, "Man, how long's he been doing?" It? Uh, probably eight months. <laughs> but, he, but he literally played for it because yeah. he never had that barrier where he was trying to win. He was like, "Oh man, hey, it's cool." Yeah, I'm gonna go play bass guitar later. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, so like. uh as a white belt, that changing those unrealistic expectations into more of a learning mindset really helps you deal with the frustrations that come with being an abject beginner in a combat sport, right? Because um, really, most of the time, when you have like, when you feel bad emotionally, it's because there is an expectation mismatch to what you're likely to have as a result and getting rid of that results oriented thinking it's it's powerful in life but god is it really applicable to jujitsu that's uh over the last week i've been really uh you know kind of just thinking and reflecting on my kids program and how i i kind of do things um and when i have kids come in from out of town stay with me I don't know how much, like I, I, th- I started thinking about the conversations I had with his dad. I gave his dad an update on the week and my update didn't have a single technique thing in it. You know, it was things, you know, how to deal with jujitsu and just uh, his goals and, and kind of, well, he was a little unrealistic at first. He came here and man, all of our kids do MMA, all of our kids compete in MMA on a national level. And he thought he should have been winning. In the first day and a half, he was like beating himself up and he was having a bad day. And, yeah. you know, we really, and it was just funny because I don't know if I taught him a technique all week. You know, I just talked to him about things like that. Like, man, let's, is that how, is that the goals we want set? Is that what we're trying to work for? So, was, you know, with kids, uh, shifting stuff like that is probably first priority in my kids program. Like, we're not trying to win. We're trying to hit moves, you know, not, and I direct kids. I give them a little more bumpers and, you know, hey, we can only work on these moves this weekend. Like, hey, we're preparing for this tournament. We can only work on these moves. Oh, man, and it, we go to competition with that mindset. Um, and we come back with more medals than you would probably think, uh, not focusing on winning. And when we set a goal with our kids to win, um, we usually come back with shiny gold medals and belts, you know, but usually we don't set goals to win, even in competition. Yeah. You know, I mean, there's for growth, right? Yeah, like yeah. it's crazy, but that's, yeah. that's just for growth purposes, nothing else. Yeah. It's a very, very interesting thing. Like setting the right mental foundation for learning. Um, it's harder to do for people when losing is so visible. It's very visible when you're losing in grappling. It's, it's especially in competitions. And I think that one of the really cool, unique things that's happening in your program is treating those things that people have as high stakes as just a part of training God, that, that, I, I feel like that's one of the um, unique things that's building such a strong foundation in these kids. Yep, so that's that's especially how I would start. You know, if I'm, if I'm starting off and I'm coming from the desk and this is a hobby, 
and that's it. If you can disconnect from it, because I mean, just uh, if you want to be competitive, and man, set you a goal. Say okay, and, and if you're working a desk job, you understand time investment. You know, say okay, maybe three years from now, I'll look at competing a little bit, but set you a time, you know, and and just cut that back. Uh, yeah. I'd, and it's the last thing I'll say about that. I, my 16-year-old, um, he lost in the finals. Uh, we've been working on his striking, on disrupting. And after, you know, the second thing he said, first thing he was like, man. I'm like, yeah, I thought so. You know, I, I thought he won the fight. And uh, But the second thing he said, he was like, I landed that teep a lot. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Micro goals. We're at a national yeah, tournament. Yeah. You know, th- this was to go to World Team Qualifier. We go to Abu Dhabi, you know, in a month. A uh, month and a half, you know, and that was just that was the second thing he said. He's like, I kept landing that teep when he would throw his right hand. I'm like, yeah, you did. We worked on that a lot. That was awesome. Yeah, oh yeah. You know, so yeah. It was really, really, really cool. So what what do you think that kind of the equivalent would look like for an adult jujitsu white belt? Um, man, you, I would, I would probably say uh, four to six weeks is usually a good periodization time to work on something. You can. So I'd probably set four to six week periods where, you know, obviously I'm still doing what what the what the class is instructing, you know, but but I would find something that I enjoy and probably four to six weeks at a time, like I would play with that. Like if if the role happened to get away from what the instructor was teaching that day, I would try to find that. You know, I would try to work on that. I would try to I wouldn't watch just any YouTube videos for a month, you know, for four to six weeks. I would watch stuff like uh right now I'm nerding out on a feet and hips and you scoop the knee for a single leg X and taking a calf slicer. So I just look at where I can find it everywhere. Yeah. Um, and now I'm grabbing that kid and I'm like, Hey, look, this is what I'm finding. And he's playing with the same thing for the time I am. And he comes and shows me things, you know, so that's 16 year old kid showing me stuff from the same little idea. So that, that's probably, it would just be fine things that, that you, you're like, Oh man, that was a cool move. We done the rolling Kimura, you know, that things like that, things that are not just, something that that is interesting because you want to do fun things and that'll help with enjoying it and that's the biggest reason why i make the kids do it you know they enjoy competing because they're trying to hit things their goals are different these other kids are throwing their head gears and slamming and parents are cussing them out we're like "Hmm, (laughs) shoot he got you didn't he (laughs) man we didn't get to do what we were trying to do no we we tried to give him his leg but he didn't want the leg you know he wanted to do his one move i was like yeah it it happens Mm mm-hmm you know, and, you, and the kids would get beat or slam in their head, you, you know, so it changes the, changes everything. Uh, I'd play, play with, play with stuff. Four to six weeks. Yeah. That would be a, that'd be a good guideline. So four, four to six weeks within, you know, a concentration bubble, right? Yep. Yeah. So and, like, and that would, oh, that's the best way to put it too, a concentration bubble. Um, you know, and hopefully we'll be soon be able to put, I want to really hammer out some technique stuff for, for that reason, like to give, there's some fun bubbles, you know, take concentration bubble, a set of. A technique that has a couple moves that you can play with and find ways to better believe it. Yeah, yeah. That's um, so the space is built. Um, we're we're just finalizing a few tweaks, and then we're gonna work with camera settings and all that kind of stuff. So uh, that kind of thing should be coming sometime in the next two to four weeks. Yeah, cool. And and then and then you'll be off in Abu Dhabi, and then we'll take a take a little breather, and then we'll try again, right? Then Abu Dhabi, and then uh, I leave Abu Dhabi, and I go to Moscow, Russia. Okay, yeah, and that's for uh, cornering somebody, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I don't yeah. get to come home. I, well, I, I could come home for 12 hours. I could fly from Abu Dhabi to Charlotte, and then I'd get back on a plane 12 hours later from Charlotte to Washington. Back Man, to forget you. that. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to hang out. I'm going to hang out in Dubai for a day. Yeah, exactly. It's okay. Yeah, so, um, so yeah, that that's that's upcoming. Um, so uh, That's a pretty – sorry, yeah. that's a pretty cool thing about uh, Abu Dhabi uh, – getting a start like white belt look you want to see like a jujitsu culture Mm -hmm. so uh just a quick little thing abu dhabi has invested a lot of money in the jujitsu culture they're trying to make jujitsu their national sport oh fascinating i didn't know that just uh, that's something that's a cool little thing to look into if you want to see like jujitsu culture growing they are and they offer a lot of money to go teach jujitsu there for three months at a time um i had the opportunity to roll in a in, in their competition room uh 13 black belts Nine had stripes. Uh, they were getting ready for some IBJJF tournament. But, yeah, the where, where the world tournament's held is in their Abu Dhabi Sports Council, their Jiu-Jitsu Federation. The gym has six mat rooms. Like, it's something crazy. It's a, it's a crazy Jiu-Jitsu facility. 
Uh, do do you know how they handle training their white belts? Um, no, but holy, there there is a bunch. Uh, you know, cause all the kid they the, the kids have the bottom floor, and then you you go up floors, and there's multiple training rooms on the other floors. Very and, interesting. Yeah, and you see guys come in all the time, uh, just loads of people. So I haven't. I've only had the opportunity. I met one of the instructors, and he invited me in. So I had kind of the, the special opportunity to train with. <laughs> the there was Yeah, there was yeah. one blue belt, one brown belt, and, you know, I was the brown belt in the room. Right. And I only got to touch the blue belt for about three minutes, and the instructor called him off, and then nine more rounds of black belts with strikes. So it was fun. Very fun. Yeah, cool. Uh, yeah, so uh, so as a, as a one, no, don't that's follow cool, it. That's yeah. cool stuff. Um, so... Create your mental foundation. Kind of shift your thinking. Um, temper your expectations. Have it be more realistic for where you're at. Like you don't you don't need to be thinking about step one hundred when you're at step five. Yeah, just think if I would have thought that I could have, uh, if I would have thought in my head that winning that 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 day I had ten rolls, and they were uh, they were doing nine minute roll or eight minute roll but nonetheless it was 10 rolls in a row nine rolls black belts with all with stripes and they didn't they you know they all spoke brazilian in dubai <laughs> in Abu Dhabi, they all spoke brazilian but if i would have really like really though if i would have set the goal that day man i'm gonna go in there and smash these guys that would have been a different experience man i probably would have been down for the next two or three days i'd have been mm -hmm. disappointed in myself like reflecting on man why did i know but man i went in there and i had fun and i caught a lot of a lot of a lot of a lot of good people but i had fun mm -hmm. they were laughing you know yeah. and, and, you know they smashed me whatever they did their smash but i had fun um you know i, I made friends i don't think some of those guys had friends in the room yeah you know because that that just there but just because of my change in demeanor in the room you know i made two or three friends and the next time i went i got invited back so i, I get to go again i will definitely get to train with him again i um, he said no bring gi next time i have gi for you very so, nice thank you. that's you cool know, so. yeah yeah Really cool, um, and that's off of you know just a different goal set. So that's a that's even a different reward than what you probably would think. You know, it's because I didn't go in there and try to try to win every round, and I had fun. Like I, I was laughing because I'd hit the move I was trying to hit, and uh, they enjoyed it. It was you know their yeah. competition, their last competition practice, and they were all in there grunting and bleeding, and not they rolled me. Mm -hmm. We would have fun and play, and uh, so it kind of changed the demeanor of all the most of the guys. There were a couple. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, there's always a couple. Always, but yeah, it, it was it, it changed there. You know, it, it typically does. We talk about traveling uh, a lot too. That's that's the way to travel and ensure that uh, no injuries and that kind of thing happens too. Because you're 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 playing. People sense that too. So yeah. So so change change up here, and it's gonna really help you set the right goals. Um, keep your motivation up. Um, make it so that. You're enjoying your training have way fun. more. Have fun. have fun. Have fun. Most of the time, oh, 99% of the people, this is supposed to be fun. So keep it fun. Um, give yourself the ability to feel a sense of progression. You're, you're not going to get that feeling if you set the wrong goals. Give yourself micro goals. Give yourself, you know, I'm going to try and hit these three escapes from this position. I'm going to pull bottom mount and then work on my bump and roll first. You know? <laughs> yeah, but that, that's yeah. it, there's, there's yeah. nothing wrong with that. The funniest thing is when you pull it, you're like, oh, 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 well, that didn't work. <laughs> and then <laughs> it's know? not a big deal. No, because that's right. exactly how you tell you. Like, oh, well, shit, that did work. I, I gave it a shot, and <laughs> now, now, now it's back to the drawing board, yeah. try and figure it out. <laughs> yeah, so, so set micro goals. It's okay. Micro goals are good. Take all of the small steps you need to take on your path and don't try to you know leap over these like pretty hard boundaries of performance like performance is going to take some time and it's going to take things that are more involved than simply working on a technique you have to build your your physical capabilities too and all of these things like building physical capabilities takes time and yeah. it takes effort and if you're only relying on jujitsu which is you know, it's okay if that's all you have time for. It's okay. Then it's going to take even more time. Yeah. Like, you, you get to build your athletic base. You get to make your progress. But it takes time. 
right? So set good micro goals. It's going to make the whole journey way more fun. It's going to feel more fulfilling and, you know, temper your expectations, right? Good deal. Yeah, 100%. All right. Well, we hope this was helpful for you. You know, if you want to share some of your uh, experiences and maybe some micro goals that you're thinking about, then leave it down in the comments below. We read them. Uh, thank you very much for watching, and we will see you next time.